to be in the house of God today, to be able to worship you in spirit and truth. God, fill the peace that passes all understanding way down in the bottom of our soul, God, this morning. God, many of us may come this way brokenhearted. God, I pray, God, you're the God that can mend the brokenhearted. Father, you're the God that can settle everything from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. And Father, I pray, God, that you just touch us a special way, God, this morning. God, that you touch every home and every family, God, that's represented here today. Father, we thank you, God, for putting a shout on the inside of us because we have something to shout about. We have something, dear Father, this side of heaven, God, to be able to look forward to the other side. I'm thankful for the goodness and the grace and mercy of God that you've extended to us, God, today. Thank you, dear Father, for saving us and Washing us all clean. Father, I pray there'd be one here that ought to be lost. Father, they'd find themselves around an old fashion of repentance before it's everlasting too late. I pray for the songs of Zion. Stir us, oh God. Prepare our heart for the word of God. Touch God's man today and we'll love you. And thank you for all your goodness and grace. In Christ's name we pray. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated if you can.
Speaking of going to church, uh, let's stand up. We're going to worship together here uh, this morning. And uh, we're going to ask the Lord to take our life and use it. I, I read something this week. It said uh, that for the first half of your life, a lot of times we get caught up in everyone knowing who we are. And in the latter part of, your, of our lives, we finally understand it's not so much, of, that's not that important. We want our lives to count. We want our lives to matter. And if you're going to make your life matter, you're going to have to give it all to Him. Let's worship this morning.
right now? Yeah. Okay. Glory to God. Let that have an everlasting. God. Amen. While he gets his breath in here, just a second, I'll say this. This song, I, uh, the Lord put in my heart and asked him to sing this. It says, sometimes you have to rise above the storm. But I'm thankful Hallelujah. that there's not a storm Come on, that you can go through or I can go through that he does not give us everlasting Amen. peace. Yes. Yes. See, the world will give you temporary peace. Drugs, alcohol, all that stuff give you just a little bit just to numb it. But you wake up in the morning it's still there. Right. And I'm glad to tell you if you'll ever get in the rock of ages, if you'll ever find the cleft of the rock, I'm glad to tell you that there is everlasting peace that is promised to the child of God. Run to Him this morning. Let's go to church.
awful tight in here. But now the Lord's starting to move a little bit. And uh, maybe that bothers you, but it don't bother me. In fact, it bothers me when he don't. Let's come and ask 
most of all, it wasn't the S-U-N that came up. But it was the S-O-N. Right. He got bigger than I was. And I just yielded to him. Sometimes that's the hardest thing in the world to do. But I'm glad he loves me. And he loved me in spite of myself. Amen. He's just a good God. Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody else? That's all right, yeah. Yeah. 
I just <laughs> Woo! Hey, woo! Yeah. Amen. I, just, I look back over the years that when I didn't have God nowhere on my mind. Old worldly things. But since God broke that old hard heart of mine and saved mm -hmm. me. I've been the happiest fellow around. <laughs> Thank you, him. Praise you, glory, God. It is. Amen. And I know he's, he's going to look after Nancy. He knows when her time is come, he'll take her home. But God is in control. That's right. I give him praise and glory. Amen. 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 It's still no longer. I, I can't. <laughs> I sit here and I listen to these people praise God. One of these days I ain't going to wear no mask. One of these days I'm going to be in heaven and I'm going to mm -hmm. praise Him. I almost died seven years ago and laying in there in that hospital. Not know whether I was going to make it or not. But God touched me and praised His holy name. I just, I just don't do enough for Him. But I want y'all to uh, pray for me and my family. And I can do whatever God asks me to do. Uh, I love him this morning, and I just love him. I I, I just I just praise him. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? I want to thank God for His Holy Spirit today. That's yes, ma'am. Yeah. I mean, I just can't I can't get over how God is working in His people today. I thank you guys for praying for us. I know that I feel more like a family now. It, it has taken me a while to come in and to be able to speak and to be able to open up. I know that you guys have not been down the path we've been down, but you've been down a path even probably harder. And I know every step of the way, God has been there for you. He'll never leave you because he promised us that. He said he'd never leave us or forsake us. Yeah. And I'm so thankful for that. I know the time is growing up for all of us. We have to make a decision. Is God going to be first or is this world going to be first? Mm -hmm. And sometimes we get so early, we don't even realize it. And God has to come into our hearts and put it, a, a guilt in there. And he has done it to us many times because we get so focused on this world. We get so focused on people and their problems. But you know, God can enlighten those problems. Amen. He can make it all good again. And I'm thankful yeah. for that. I'm thankful for my husband who has stood by my side all these years. We've been together a lot of years. <laughs> and only he can do it. You know, because you have your problems each and every day. And you got to work on a marriage. It don't come easy. Amen. And I thank God for all of you. And I thank God for what he's doing in you. And I thank you for praying for us. Amen. Amen. Anybody else just want to brag on Jesus? It'd be all right.
all over the world the sea of people that would rise up. And here comes this beast out of the sea, Gage, and it's coming to bring hurt and harm and destruction and doom where it's at. But then in chapter 4, or later in chapter 13 rather, uh, look down at verse number, uh, I'll, get it, I'll get it here, verse number 11, verse number 11, and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and spake as a dragon. He exercised all the power of the first beast before him, causes the earth and uh, them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. He doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of them. He deceiveth them he dwell, uh, that dwell on the earth by uh, the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, uh, that they should make an image to the beast uh, which had the wound by a sword and did live and he had uh, power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image should both speak and cause uh, that as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So you see there's a beast of the sea, there's a beast of the sand. On both sides they've got this beast and this is part, remember, you've got God as a trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the, uh, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. You've got Satan, that old dragon. Uh, you've got this beast, uh, that, and then you've got, uh, you've got the Antichrist, and you have the false prophet. Uh, the false prophet takes the place of the Holy Spirit. The Antichrist is imitating Jesus Christ. So you've got the beast of the sea. That's the Antichrist. You've got the beast of the sand. That's the false prophet. And they are wreaking havoc. And they will wreak havoc. Can I? Let me just pause right here because I, I, I will get somewhere in just a second, but I've got to build this up. What we, once you read the book of Revelation, one day will happen. It's not just somebody's ideas. It is the very word of God. And every jot and every tittle will be put in place and will come to pass just as he says it will. Now, if you're saved by the grace of God, you can escape and you will escape that. But if you're sitting in this room right now and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, one day the, the tribulation will happen after what we call the rapture. The rapture of the church, the blood bought, the redeemed will be called out of this world and we'll go home to be with the Lord and so shall we ever be with the Lord. That will happen. Then the tribulation period will happen and that's where we find ourselves in Revelation 13, Revelation chapter 14. Uh, we find that this beast of the sea, this beast of the sand, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to share some more about, about this later on, but I don't have time to. I want to get to this last part. As we look, Brother Robert, and the destruction that comes from these that want to be worshipped, that demand to be worshipped. There's people that will lose their life because they will not bow to this beast. But I'm thankful that in the midst of all that, God did not give up. And God didn't throw in the flag. Because in chapter number 14, you read about 144,000 that God had sealed there's a beast of the sand, there's a beast of the sea, but there's a battalion of the seal. In all that, while all that's happening, God said, all right, I got an army, and we're getting ready to go forth, and they go forth, and what they bring is the gospel of the Lord Jesus. They go all around this world preaching the gospel. They preach, they preach, the judgments continue to come, and then in Revelation chapter number 19, Jesus Christ comes back riding on a white horse with the church behind him. I say hallelujah. This whole world might look dark. This whole world might look bleak. But I'm telling you what, we win in the end. He's coming back. He's going to return and set up his kingdom on this earth. 
There are people that, as much as they've heard it, I, I guess I could go to anybody in this room. <clears throat> Whoever might be the in church the longest. And I could ask them, do you remember the preachers preaching that Jesus would come back? And every one of them is going to say, yeah. I believe, I remember preachers preaching he'd come back soon. And should the Lord, Brother John, should the Lord tarry his coming another 50 years, he's still coming back. Real soon. He's coming back just at the right time. I don't know why he hadn't come back yet. Except to know this, it is not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. He loved you so much. Well, just play some song. Come here, Katie. Come here. This is my youngest child. This is Katie. She's sweet. I tell you what, you bit into her, you get the diabetes. <laughs> She's eight years old. And I can't think of anyone in this room or anywhere else that I love enough that I would let one of my children die for. Them. But Jesus died. The only begotten of the Father died for you. Amen. And you. There's not one person in this room, there's not one person that's watching that he did not die for. And he wants to change your life. He wants to change your eternity. Please, don't wait to see it on satellite and the internet where the beast has risen up. They're demanding that you bow. Give your heart and life to Jesus Christ. And when the trump of God sounds, preacher, the Bible said this, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds and so shall we ever be with the Lord. I this, this week I, I attended a funeral of a teenager. So sad. Watching the family broken hearted. It was nothing they even knew was wrong. And I stood beside gravesides and you have as well. People try to hug you. People try to comfort you. People try all that. And they mean well. But there's something on the inside of you that goes down. It's very too. But for the child of God, that's not the end. John over there on the hills in Belmont. Mama, don't get up again. Preacher, over there in Gastonia, Miss Betty is going to live again. They're going to rise and then we get to go. I'm not telling you a fairy tale. I'm telling you the Word of God. But you can't know that. You can't experience that. And that'll never be true for you unless... You know the Lord Jesus Christ is your Savior. Amen. I want you to stand with me. I wonder how many of us would come and play, find a place around this altar and say, Thank you, God, for saving me. Thank you, God, for salvation full and free. Thank you, God, for all that you've done in my life. Maybe you want to come and pray for somebody. 
Maybe there's somebody in your heart, somebody in your family, somebody in your life, and they need Jesus Christ. You can find a place in a pew somewhere, on an altar, wherever. God knows your heart. God, thank you for saving me. God, thank you for that blessed hope that I have. While these are praying, maybe you're here this morning and say, Preacher, Preacher, I know I'm saved, but I'm not where I need to be with God. There's areas in my life, there's things in my life that I need help with. Here's my hand. Would you slip it up, put it right back there? I won't call you out, come to you, embarrass you. But I would love to pray for you. Is anybody like that? Here's my hand. We see those. Maybe you're here this morning and say, Preacher, I'm not 100% sure that I'm ready to meet God. I do not have that blessed assurance. I do not know that if I died right now, I do not know where I'd spend eternity. Please pray for me. Is there somebody like that? Slip your hand up, put it right back down. Preacher, here's my hand. I won't call you out and embarrass you, but I'd love to pray for you. Preacher, would you please pray for me? I need the Lord. I need God in my life. Maybe you're watching. Somebody can will, will get with you. Preacher, please pray for me. Just, just type it in there. We'll get with you. We'll contact you. Oh God, I need salvation. I need to be washed in the blood. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, God. Lord, I wasn't raised in all of it. Knew a little bit about it. But Lord, I thank you, God, that you came to where I was and saved me. I could be in hell and deserve to be in jail, no doubt, today. But your grace and mercy. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for changing my life. Changing my eternity. I love you. Oh, we bless you. Oh God, we ask these things in the name that is above every name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm, uh, I'm going to do something that I rarely do uh, unless asked. But uh, you can remain standing if you want as we get ready to leave. But uh, if there's somebody here and you've been praying about this and you uh, haven't made the move yet, but you've been praying about it and you feel like this is where God would have you. Uh, if you want to come and join the church, uh, we would love to, uh, to help you to do that. Is there anybody here uh, you feel like this is where I'm supposed to be? Uh, I'm, I'm, I need to be a part of this church. Uh, I'm going to give just a moment and allow you to do that if you feel like that's where the Lord has you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Wonderful. Amen. This feels almost almost as good as when my mama joined the church. <clears throat> I've known Ronnie and Becky most of my life, and uh, always just been tremendous people. And uh, thankful they've been here faithfully many years. We're thankful for them, and uh, I appreciate uh, Miss Debbie here. She's been a blessing, and uh, I'm thankful for her. Somebody else, uh, I want to join this church. This is, uh, this is where I want to be part of. This is what I want to be part of. Uh, I, I just, I'll throw in with you. We're going to move on to the glory of God. Anybody else? All right.
Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask y'all to go back there and stand out at the foyer somewhere, and we'll get it taken care of here uh, a little bit. But aren't, aren't you thankful for Ronnie, Becky, and Hawkins? Praise the Lord. We appreciate them. They're, they're, they'll be out there, and they can uh, give you a fist bump or something like that. They wave at you or something out there. And uh, we do appreciate you uh, coming to church today. Uh, those of you that were able to come to Sunday school, it was good to be back in that uh, environment. Uh, we'll be doing that again next Sunday. And uh, if you're not comfortable with that, it's, it's, we're not we're not going to twist your arm or we're not going to shame you or anything like that. Uh, but uh, those I know there's some that wanted to do that. Um, we'll be back in there uh, in a large group format over in the fellowship hall on next Sunday at 10 a.m. All right. Uh, no service tonight, but we will be here uh, Wednesday. Is there anything that I, I need to be making mention of? All right. My wife said they're causing trouble. That's what she's doing. Hey, Amen. Uh, it's time to be dismissed in a word of prayer. Uh, thank you again for coming all the way out. Be sure uh, to, they got the plates there. Uh, let's be faithful in our giving. Let me mention something. Uh, you probably saw those blue and white envelopes or white envelopes with blue writing. Um, that's that's what we're calling our vision fund. Um, Lord willing, uh, we, we're paying about $2,000 a month toward our building payment. Uh, so what we're going to do is put that into our vision fund uh, for the remainder of the year. Uh, that will put us up around $8,000, but... Uh, just to, uh, to, to show our faith, uh, we've got a goal of $10,000 by the end of January or the end of uh, December. And uh, so if you want to give, if you've been giving toward the building fund, and praise the Lord, we were able to pay that off and we're going to be celebrating. Uh, we got the official paper this week uh, from the, the all the uh, initial papers and all that stuff. And um, we'll be uh, taking care of having a big celebration October the 18th, uh, but if you want to give, uh, we'll be talking about uh, that, uh, some of the things that we want to be able to do with that later on, but if you want to give toward that, uh, that's going to go toward some of the items that we'll talk to you about uh, here in the next month or two months or so, and let you know uh, some of the ideas what we can do there, all right? Uh, so you give, and let the Lord bless you, all right? Uh, let's be dismissed. Brother John, if you will, you pray for us. Thank you, God, for the love that you give us that we know. There's no way we can deserve all that you do 